you know, there was times where you're going through undergrad and you're trying to keep your grades up so you can make it to dental school or you're in dental school and you're taking classes and you're around the, what they considered the cream of the crop. And you've got, you know, all these A plus 40 students around you that, you know, rock any standardized test that you could ever imagine. And, you know, you know, I did well in school, but I wasn't kind of like the photographic memory guy that was just going to destroy everybody on a test. So, um, you know, he just said, you know, he goes, don't forget, you know, he goes, if your ax is dull, you just got to swing harder. (laughs) (laughs) That's good. I love that. (laughs) And since I was slow, it took me a while. And then I'm just kidding. But, uh, no, when he said that, I was like, I was like, you know, that's a good point. That was a, it's a line of like perseverance and, and, and hard work, you know, and I've always felt like I put in a lot of effort studying and everything else. So it was good to know that, you know, he understood that and we could connect on that. Um, another one would just be, um, you know, I think I had to retake a class. Like I think it was organic chemistry, which I don't know if you've ever heard anything about that, but it's basically yeah. the worst class you could ever take it ever. It's terrible. <laughs> and I think our first day of organic chemistry, our professor said, uh, he goes, Hey guys, welcome to this is organic chemistry. He's like, you probably heard about it. Um, what I'll say is about 40% of you won't be here tomorrow uh, after the first lecture. And he was actually right. Like nobody showed up the second lecture wow. because they're just like, I can't do this. Well, so I had to, I ended up getting C's in organic chemistry and I had to retake it. Um, and I was kind of bumming about it. And I was talking to my grandpa and he goes, well, you know, the thing is uh, it's always easier the second time. And I was like, well, that's a good point. So very simple little sayings, but it's just kind of like, you know, he didn't let himself, he didn't let his mind go to this space of just like bumming. And it was good for me to kind of just always, you know, he, he wasn't an excuse guy. He was just going to power through it. And so it, it just always kind of, it was a, it was a family member saying that he's the one that has raised my mom and is the reason my sisters and I exist. And, you know, he and my whole family, you know, all get together for holidays or major holidays and see each other because he's the one that wants to bring everyone together. So for him to basically be a leader in the family like that and to be giving this advice to one of his grandkids, I mean, it's like, uh, and then it sticks with me, you know, and he's, he's still super supportive all the time, always asking how we're doing. So those, those just kind of stuck with me and kind of helped drive me in the background. I love that. And I love it too, because I feel like that generation, like anyone 80 and older, even 70 and older just gets overlooked sometimes. And I know for us, I've done it before too, but our generation or younger, just see them as, you know, like, oh, that's old school. Like they were bringing in the new school and they have so much wisdom that we often overlook. So I love that. Anytime I get a chance to talk to an older uh, man or woman that wants to talk. I really like, I love asking deep questions or hearing stories because they just have a perspective that we have no idea about right now. sounds like your grandpa did such an amazing job. So that's, that's really, really cool. 